This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. The opening ceremonies for Paris 2024 are just around the corner, and it's time to break down these Summer Olympic Games and talk about what we think may transpire for this year. To do so, we're going to bring on a whole host of FanDuel research experts and pick their brain on their favorite bets across the entirety of the games this year. We're talking Andy Nader, Aiden Cotter, Austin Cass, and Brandon Gadula to pick their brains in the best bets for Paris 2024. This is Covering the Spread, a FanDuel research podcast. My name is Jim Saunas, and I'm the managing editor for FanDuel research here today to break down we're seeing value across Paris 2024 and let you know top bets across all the futures at FanDuel Sportsbook for this year. As mentioned, four separate guests coming for today. We'll break down what Annie thinks will transpire first in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. You can find an Apple Podcast, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast, you can find us. You can also find us on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV Plus to get all these shows as they go live tomorrow. Talking to the USC for a pay-per-view with Austin Swain. Let's bring on now Annie Nader, a writer for FanDuel Research. You can find Annie on Twitter at a Nader33. Annie, Paris Olympics just around the corner. What's your level of excitement entering these? Fairly excited. I well, I don't want to not root for the USA. I do hope that they have a couple games where it's like they think we that they may lose because I want close games. It'll you want close boring. games. You want competitiveness it. because you didn't get that in the NBA finals, but I think you're probably exactly. okay with that still uh, after the, the your Celtics got the win there. Have you come down from that victory yet? Yes, for the most part. Now I'm on to the Red Sox, who I all of a sudden had hope, and then now I don't think I do anymore. Be an Alex Cora extension. I That's know, good, I know. right? I do think that they'll buy the deadline now because of that, so I'm pretty excited, but they, last, yesterday was tough. Yeah, I mean, life, life, uh, life for a Boston sports fan, I'm sure, is always tough. You know, <laughs> tough, tough to struggle through the hard times as always. Now, for the Olympics, any specific sport you like most? We'll talk about your favorite bet in a second, but like, is there a sport you tend to watch most? You know, what's your favorite uh, sport to view for the Olympics? I mean, basketball is my favorite sport to watch. So that's what I feel like I know best for the Olympics. The other ones are like gymnastics, swimming, track. Like, those are more just fun to get in on. I don't. Yeah particularly know a lot about those but yeah the usa people they all come back and it's pretty exciting so i'd say those three i find it personally like kind of fun to like watch a sport i know nothing about um it's kind of like freeing to like just know nothing be like hey water polo is kind of cool um so personally i do actually enjoy that aspect of the olympics yeah it is pretty fun Okay, well, let's get Annie's best bet across the Olympics. So, Annie, when you look at all the markets at FanDuel Sportsbook, what's your favorite one for this year? So, for men's basketball, I like the to win a medal market. I think that's pretty intriguing because with the gold medal, we know USA is the chalk for both men's and women's, so it's a little hard there. But um, in this market, I, I'm really interested in France. Uh, they won silver last time around, lost a close game uh, to the USA, uh, who obviously won it. Um, but this time they're bringing back six of their players from that team. And they now have Victor Wambanyama. So him and Gobert, that's a pretty fun front court that you could put them against certainly any other front court uh, in, these, in the Olympics with the exception of the USA. Um, and they also could benefit from the FIBA rules, which is pretty exciting. Uh, one of those main things is five fouls, which obviously that could affect any team equally. But I do think if an, if an opposing team loses a big, big and you have Gobert and Wemby in there, that could be pretty brutal. More importantly, the goaltending rules are different. In the NBA, uh, the ball's on the rim. You can't touch it. Under FIBA rules, that ball's live. I imagine Victor Wembanyama can uh, have some pretty fun on both ends of the court with that rule. Um, they also, I like the group that they're in. So they're in group uh, B, which features Brazil, Japan, Germany, and France. Um, Brazil and Japan have the longest odds to win gold. And uh, Germany's okay. I think they're a step below France, but they're still a pretty good team. But that's a pretty easy uh, group considering they don't have to p- uh, play USA or Canada there. Um, they're, all, they're also going to draw Brazil in the first game. They come in minus 600 for that. So I think they'll be able to start off with a lot of good momentum. They have a pretty easy group. I think they can bet it from, from the FIBA rules. And it's also these are in Paris, like the hometown sure. crowd. Like I think they have a few things working in their favor there. 
And uh, that front court's pretty exciting. So when you consider all those factors, I'm kind of surprised they're only plus 116 to medal. I know that obviously, like, there's a lot of good competition here and there are a lot of good players and on the individual or teams, but like, and they're the third shortest odds to win a medal, but that does, that does feel kind of, kind of long. Yeah. I think they don't have a lot of good guard play, which, mm. but I, I don't think that I'd rather have a good, a really, really good front court than a few good, like Canada has really good guard play. Their front court is Kelly Olenek and Dwight Powell. Like, that could get pretty rough for them at some point. So I get it from the standpoint of like, maybe not a great leading guard. Sure. But I, I do really like the value on this, considering that I think some uh, some periphery factors could really help them. And also Gobert and Wemby, like that could be pretty lethal. Okay. So Annie is on France plus 116 to win a medal in the men's side of things for basketball. Any thoughts for you on Team USA uh, from what you've seen from them so far? Obviously, some close calls in the exhibitions, yeah. uh, but w- what are you thinking about them right now? The LeBron takeover is, I mean, it's here. I can't, I can't <laughs> buy it. So he is pretty much leading them, but I don't know. It's always very interesting because you have a bunch of stars grouped together and uh, seeing how they work together is pretty interesting. Luckily they, they did bring in two guys from the Celtics beyond Tatum. They have White and Drew Holiday, who uh, I think will definitely help them a lot because they're going to need some good defenders and good three-point shooters and uh, people who aren't just looking to you know, score. Okay. Well, that is, uh, that's Annie's thoughts on men's basketball. Again, you can find Annie on X at a Nader 33. Annie, appreciate the time as always. Enjoy the Olympics. Enjoy the blissful ignorance of watching sports we know nothing about. And uh, good luck to you with the France one as well. Thank you, Jim. All righty. Again, you can find uh, Annie on, uh, on X at a Nader 33. Uh, to get all of her work there. Now, we're going to jump ahead and talk some golf for right now and bring on Brandon Gadula. Brandon is on X at Gadula13. You can find his work over at FanDuel Research, where he is a senior managing editor. Brandon, surprise, you're on air. You can find Brandon on X at Gadula13. Uh, Brandon, how you doing today? I'm good. A little caught off guard. Wasn't fully set up. Uh, but hey, we're going to rock and roll. Uh, no worries. Um, now I was talking to Andy about her favorite sports to watch in the Olympics. So what about for you? Uh, if you're, if you're picking one to watch, wait, are you going golf going chalk answer here for you? So that's actually what I was like digging into. Uh, thinking, of, cause like I'm not a huge Olympics watcher. I think I'm going to try more and more this year. Okay. Uh, golf is the easy number one. I'd say basketball's up there. Yeah. But very interested always uh, in skateboarding. Uh, skateboarding. Skateboarding. Yeah. So like if I had one, I'm like a I'm like a sort of OK overall athlete. You know, yeah. I have I have my basketball. I play golf. Uh, but it, it, feel, it feels like at times I'd rather trade all that in to be able to skateboard. Can uh, you or no? No, no, no. OK. <laughs> I'm far too afraid of getting injured. I tried it. And like I'd, I'd fall off and jam my wrist and then I couldn't play basketball. I'm yeah. like, I was like, I don't really want to make this trade off. Couldn't lift weights, couldn't golf, et cetera. So I've tried it. I grew yeah. up with like the Tony Hawk games. I grew up loving skateboard culture. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, that's one that I'll tune into. Like the uh, Junko sure. jeans, like the the huge jeans and stuff. No, no, no. Like I wasn't quite like the the fashion so much yeah. although i did have some like birdhouse t-shirts um actually I don't know what that is actually it's like tony hawk's oh, brand. okay cool um do you watch the tony hawk but, documentary on hbo no i don't have hbo so i'll i will not give you my login i, I would never do that i wouldn't take it anyway. shout out warner brothers would never do that um okay Let's talk to you about your favorite bet across the Olympic Games. When you look at all the markets of FanDuel Sportsbook, what's your favorite value as of right now? So I got to go to golf, uh, simulated out both the men's and women's uh, event. And I did kind of land on a specific name, at least for now. You know, we're, we're a ways out uh-huh. uh, when it comes to golf. But it's going to be Colin Morikawa uh, to win on the men's side. So. We're going back to the Golf National, which is back where uh, Team Europe just kind of romped the U.S. in the Ryder Cup in 2018. It was 17 and a half to 10 and a half. There were tighter fairways, you know, European Ryder Cup setup. It, it definitely happens. Um, 
but you know, we also have courses or sorry, we have events on the DP world tour where they played at like golf national. And so when I dig back into those, one thing really jumps out and it's iron play, uh, the four champions with shot link data that I could find at least that just kind of stopped after that. I'm not a hundred percent familiar with how far back shot link data goes on the DP world tour, which for anyone who doesn't know is the European tour rebranded. Uh, but the champions at this course in this era that I have data for ranked third, second, second, and ninth in stroke scan approach. So all were top 10, three were top three in stroke scan approach. That's iron play. Uh, other than that, it was kind of a mixed bag in terms of the key stats, sort of other than putting. Each of the four winners rank, ranked uh, top 21 in stroke scan putting. Some drove it better than others. Some chipped it, you know, sort of better than others. But approach and putting were the two key stats. So ultimately ball strikers, so good off the tee play with a bit of an emphasis on hitting fairways and approach who can putt it well, I think will be the main targets. And that kind of sets up for Colin Morikawa. So, I mean, there are quite a few names. It's a, it's a very good field, especially yeah. at the very, very top. Um, I think John Rahm is an interesting name after what he showed at the open. Uh, Ludwig, hard to deny his potential. He and Rory not having a great, Showings at the open, I think, is that uh, this could be a, a bounce back spot. They could put a little more uh, emphasis on it, although I think Rory's just feeling pressure at this point. Xander, my guy, two time major winner, uh, has a gold medal already. If he took two in a row, that would be something. And then, of course, Scotty Scheffler, uh, not that far off in my model it, it, where yeah. he is right now. So that says a lot. But Colin Morkawa, uh, if you think hitting fairways, striping the irons, and then making putts. That's basically Morikawa now that the putter has gotten a lot better uh, in recent events. Great major season for him. Uh, T3 at Masters, T4 at the PGA, T14 at the US Open, and T16 at the Open. So again, you just kind of go back, think, okay, who's going to hit some fairways? Who's going to hit a lot of greens in regulation? Yeah. And who can make some putts? It's Colin Morikawa. Um, and he, was, he did play in the Olympics uh, back in the 2020 games, finished T4, uh, losing out in a... Uh, playoff for the bronze but shot a closing round 63 so i think he'd like to build on that momentum and maybe convert after such a great uh, major year okay so brandon is on morikawa at 11 to 1 did want to talk to women briefly while i have you here obviously no bet recommendations but what are your overall thoughts in the field i know nelly court has cooled off a bit from where she was this spring which is impossible not to when you win six events in basically a very short time frame but any thoughts for you in the women even though there's no bets for you there yeah, so I actually, it's one of those where a lot of the top of the board is a bit overvalued just from mm -hmm. a pure modeling standpoint for me uh, with Corda, uh, Titus Kum. But Lilia Vu is not too bad um, by comparison. It would be it would be nice to see uh, Rose come out and get this. But if I really had to get it, I know you're not asking me, but yeah. one of the key na one of the names I'm keying in on for now is uh, Hannah Green. Um she is, I believe, tied for first in, so we don't have any shot link data, but putts per green and regulation, probably the best we can do when it comes to uh, putting stats. She's tied for first on tour this season. Uh, she is 10th in greens and regulation. She is longer off the tee than she is accurate, which is not exactly what we're looking for. But um, in terms of long-term form, which is what my model accounts for, Greens and regulation going to be, you know, if you don't have shot link data, greens and regulation is pretty much the go-to stat. And good putting numbers, I think that's appealing. But I'm honestly excited. Uh, women's golf is a lot of fun to watch, especially if you're, you know, if you're a golfer and maybe you're not driving it 340 or 404 or whatever. Um, it, it's it's a it's a good game uh, for sure, and I'm excited to see. And it's always nice to see the men and women play the same course, see how it sort of plays similar or different. Uh, but yeah, I would say Colin and uh, Hannah Green for now, kind of my, I know you didn't want me to give a, a I don't care, care, but I was just curious. Now. I want to know why Nelly wasn't a value at plus 550 and you answered that. So we're all good to go. That is Brandon Cadula. You can find him on X at Cadula 13. Check out his work over at FanDuel Research where he is a senior managing editor. Brandon, appreciate the time as always. Uh, and we'll talk to you again in the very near future. Thanks for having me.
already. Again, you can find Brandon on X at Gadula13. Our final guest for today is going to be Austin Cass. You can find Austin on Twitter at Austin Cass. He is a senior editor for FanDuel Research in Austin. Austin, I've been asking everyone their favorite Olympic sports. I don't feel the need to do that for you because I'm assuming it's soccer. Am I okay to make that assumption for you? Uh, I mean, I I'll watch. I watched yesterday and the day before, but it's um, it's track and field for me. I love watching. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. It's just the thought of these people working so hard for like 20 seconds or 10 seconds. Like, it kind of blows my mind, that amount of pressure. So, yeah, I really like watching the sprints. Okay, I know you played baseball, but did you play? Did you do track and field in high school too, or no? No, I did in junior okay. high. Uh, but what no, was your I, event in junior high? Uh, I ran the mile in the eight hundred. Okay. Yeah. So you got some endurance. Okay, I like that. I used to. Yeah. So I love I don't it. Have it anymore. Okay, well, we'll forgive you for that. Uh, dad life takes a toll for sure. Now, Austin, when we look at the markets of FanDuel Sportsbook for the Olympics. What are your favorite? What's your one favorite bet for this year? For it's going to be in the men's tournament, and I really like France to win the gold medal at plus 175. Uh, coming into the tourney, it seemed like they probably had the strongest squad on paper. Uh, Spain would be the only other side that could really uh, make an argument for that title. After Wednesday's opening matches, it really, really looks like France is the best team in the tournament. They battered the U.S. 3-0. It's pretty much the perfect start for them. Uh, Michael Olise and Alexander Lacazette, their top two attackers, both got a goal and an assist. Defensively, they kept a clean sheet. Uh, when you compare that to Spain, Spain won 2-1 to one over Uzbekistan. Uh, had a much easier match in terms of level of competition, but kind of barely got over the line. And they were a big 290 money line, minus 290 money line favorite in that one. So of the two big favorites, France definitely looked like the better team. Uh, you don't want to put too much stock into one match, especially the opening match of a tournament. Sometimes those can be pretty unpredictable. But for me, this French team is just a tier above uh, the rest of the field in my eyes. Um, going by transfermarket.com, which specializes in transfer values for club soccer, four of the eight individual players with the highest transfer values in this tournament are French. Uh, one of the four is not the aforementioned Lacazette, whose transfer value isn't very high because he's 33 years old. But he's a proven goal scorer who has 46 combined goals over the last two League One seasons for Lyon. So all in all, I think France has the most talent in the tourney. And while we're dealing with a one-game sample, they looked really, really good in that one game and gave me comfort that they're going to be able to find a way to turn all that talent into cohesive team performance. Okay, so Austin is on France based on what he saw in the opening matches on Wednesday. Austin writing up some betting guides for us uh, over on FanDuel Research as well, talking about uh, games he likes each day. Uh, got some stuff up for the U.S. women's team for Thursday as well, if you're listening on Thursday. So check out all that over at FanDuel Research. That is Austin Cass. Find him on Twitter, at Austin Cass, and check out his work over at FanDuel Research. Austin, appreciate the time as always. Enjoy the track and field. Enjoy the soccer. We'll talk to you again soon. Sounds good. Thank you, Jim. Alrighty. Again, thank you to all of our guests for joining us here today. Annie Nader, Brandon Gadula and Austin Cass. Annie is on X at Nader33. Brandon is at Gadula13. And Austin is at Austin Cass. I am on X at Jim Sonis. You can find FanDuel Research on X at FanDuel Research. Tomorrow, we're going to be joined by Austin Swaim to break down UFC 304 and his top bets across all those matches for this week. This has been Covering the Spread, a FanDuel Research podcast. 